How is it going, Bears fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Bear Down Podcast, where we talk everything Bears every day of the week. I'm your host, Chris Mulpey, and today I'm joined with my co-hosts, Parth Shaw and Jalen McClinton. How's it going, fellas? Doing pretty good. You know, I just recorded a Bears video like an hour ago, and here we are recording another one. So the grind is coming. I'm excited to record more videos. Yeah, we're just finishing up school. Um, we got a couple weeks left. We're just trying to get all that done. Excited to talk to our guests, definitely. Absolutely, and I'm excited to have the Chicago Blackhawks in the playoffs. Uh, a little bit off note there, but uh, we are very excited to be joined by a special guest today. He has over 15,000 subscribers on YouTube and may just be known as the king of mixtapes here in Chicago. Uh, he's also the owner of the Windy City Productions. Welcome to the show, Rashab Sikri. I think I said that right. Yeah, you said that right. Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. Appreciate it. So uh, yeah, today yeah. with Rashab, we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, all the success that he's had on his channel, obviously breaking down the Bears heading into the 2020 season. So let's hop right into it. Rashab, this this seems like uh, it, it's coming a little bit late. Uh, you've been a fan of the show and a friend of the show for a while, but we're excited to have you on. Oh, without a doubt, yeah. Yeah, but, at least we're getting it done. Yeah, absolutely. Point. So obviously, yeah. you know, you've amassed over 3.3 million views on YouTube. And as yeah. the days pass, your views continue to jump. So I want to ask how this journey started for you and how you've gotten to this point. Well, honestly, if I have to be honest, like I had no intention of starting a YouTube channel like two years ago in 2018. Uh, after all the you know hirings we made, we got Matt Nagy. We got some pretty good other coaches. We had, you know, obviously a really good offseason. We had really good draft picks. We had so many good like signings like Allen Robinson and Trey Burton. Who at the time I thought was a good signing. Obviously, he's <laughs> not now, but um, Taylor Gabriel, I could go on and on. And I was just so damn excited about the Bears that I knew that I had to share this excitement with other people somehow. And at that time, I had actually never edited videos before, so I had no experience, you know, making hype tapes or, you know, producing mm -hmm. analysis videos or whatever. So I just kind of, like, went for it. I was like okay, one day I was just free, I had nothing else to do. I was like, why not just make a hype video about the Bears, see what happens. And, you know, I did not expect it to get any views whatsoever. I thought I'd get maybe, like, a couple hundred views if I was lucky. But a couple days later, I look at my video, it has 90,000 views. So I'm like, holy shit, like, I'm actually onto something maybe. So I just kept on making more and more videos, just trying to share my passion with about the Bears because I love this damn team so much. I've been a fan ever since I am you know, like five or six years old. I've watched pretty much every single game. And I've just been trying to get better at video editing, get better at, you know, doing analysis, breaking stuff down. And, mm -hmm. you know, the rest is history. It's just kind of been a mixture of luck and hard work and just pure passion, really. Yeah. So going off to that, um, you continue to gain loads of subscribers every day. Where do you hope to take this one day? Man, I have no idea. Like, this is honestly just something I'm doing for fun right now. But people have said to me, like, I could maybe turn this into a career at some point. Um, in college, obviously, I'm studying, like, finance and accounting right now, which is totally unrelated to what I'm doing with my YouTube channel. But if I could get to maybe, like, 100K one day, that would be freaking dope. I mean, it'll be hard to do that only doing Bears videos because there's only so many Bears fans you can, like, attract yeah. to your channel. Mm -hmm. But... You know, doing maybe a hundred K would be nice, but obviously I, I have a lot to go until there. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, that silver play so button. You, yeah. So uh, staying yeah. on YouTube, uh, obviously the goal for YouTubers is one K, then five K, ten K, etc., and stuff like that. But uh, right now you're at fifteen point eight K subscribers. What's the next big goal for you? Next big goal would probably be twenty K. I mean, every five K I get pretty excited, but. 20k would be pretty nice i think we're at almost 16k i'm yeah. uh, pretty sure and we're, we've been growing pretty fast um i haven't been making that many videos lately either so I, I hope to get back on the grind soon because summer has officially started for me so i have a lot more free time now and uh you also if any of my subs right now are watching this video which obviously they are go subscribe to bear down too these guys have been putting out a <laughs> lot of really good content over the past couple weeks so appreciate it yeah man, man. Yeah, yeah no so uh, now to get into the thick of things, and I've got a little bit of an inkling as of what you're going to say to answer this one. It's the most important question, but we all mm -hmm. know what's going down at training camp. Uh, it's the open competition between Mitchell Trubisky 
and Nick oh, Foles. Yeah. Uh, we've taken our sides here on the show before, but we want your opinion. Who do you think wins that competition and why? So there's two different answers I can give, one based on my heart and one based on my head. So based on <laughs> my heart, I definitely want Mitch Trubisky to win this. I've been a fan of him since like he was drafted. Obviously, you know, last season was... Really bad. There was a lot of stuff that didn't go our way. And, you know, we all kind of, I guess, overreacted to how it went. Um, I released, like, a bunch of rent videos on him as well, as my subs probably know. But deep down, man, I still want Mitch to succeed. He's the guy we drafted at number two overall. He's still a really nice guy. You know, you want him to succeed, obviously. But going based on my head, you know, going based on what I think statistically is going to happen when you bring in a guy like Nick Foles, who has... You know, decent amount of success um, in the system like this. He's worked with Nagy before. He's worked with some other guys in our coaching staff before. Um, I would think that his experience and his just talent right now would probably beat out Mitch. So I would probably say Nick Foles is going to beat out Mitch Trubisky. But Nick Foles also has not played a full 16 games like ever. So at some point, Mitch Trubisky is probably going to be on the field. But to Mm -hmm. begin, I feel like it's going to be Nick Foles. Good answer there. Yeah, I, I I feel like that's a really good answer. I mean, yeah, to yeah, see sure. uh, Trubisky come into the game because of Nick Foles getting hurt, maybe Trubisky, you know, turn to Ryan Tannehill from like last oh, yeah. year. You know, that, that'd be oh, awesome that'd be too. Dope. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my next question is: The Bears added a ton of pieces this offseason on the defensive side, highlighted by Robert Quinn, Jalen Johnson, and Deshaun Gibson. Do you think the Bears D can replicate the success of 2018 that won the NFC North? Oh, without a doubt, man. I think it's going to be actually better than 2018. I know it's, that's a really tough uh, bar to reach, but if you look at our pass rush, first of all, um, Robert Quinn is a very big upgrade over Leonard Floyd. Like, it's not even close. Yep. Um, there's a graph I put up in one of my videos that just shows, like, how, um, you know, Quinn has been one of the most productive pass rushers in the league uh, last year, and he's just so far better than Leonard Floyd. So, just having another pass rusher opposite of Khalil Mack that's going to open up so many other things. And also getting a guy like Jalen Johnson that can play press, play press that can play physical. Um, you know, maybe eventually he could be an upgrade over Prince of Mucamara, although Prince of Mucamara was still pretty decent. You know, I feel like from an athlete, athletic point of view, um, Jalen Johnson could be better. And um, really the only place where I see we downgraded heavily from 2018 is that defensive coordinator because Vic Fangio man that guy is smart as hell that guy knows what he's doing and yeah the jury is still out on Chuck Pagano I feel like he had a pretty decent season but he didn't do as good as Vic Fangio you know obviously but he also had injuries to deal with as well so hoping Chuck Pagano can uh, also you know take another step up mm-hmm. all right so going into my next question we've seen all the media hate from for the Bears recently Rather be Matt Miller saying Eddie Jackson is in the top 10 safety oh, or God. saying Khalil Mack is in the top three edge rusher in the NFL. Do you think the Bears yeah. are getting a tough time from the media in general? They always have, man. Like, I cannot remember a time where we've actually been loved by the media besides maybe last year. And we all know how that turned out. So yeah. I, I actually did a video on this too, like why the media hate is actually going to benefit us. Because it feels like literally every time we're doubted by the media this much, we have just a phenomenal season so you know yeah a lot of the stuff that matt miller is saying about how we're like the second worst team like literally nobody believes that anybody that actually watches football does not believe that so (laughs) i feel like they're doing it just to get a reaction out of us because bears fans are so like freaking passionate we're gonna defend our team till the end so that that's kind of what they're doing i feel like yeah uh you know over here at Bear Down, we've been fortunate enough to interact with a ton of players recently, like Prince of Mukamara, Pat Scales, guys like Adam Rank and Patrick Manley. And you've been featured on Bleacher Report and have also done a ton of work for players in the past. So what's your coolest yeah, yeah. interaction been with a, a Bears or an NFL player? Um, I would have to say Eddie Jackson, honestly. He follows me on uh, Instagram, too. So we've had some conversations uh he was actually the first bear ever to notice my work, so I'm always appreciative of him for that. But uh, pretty much like how we first met was that I released a highlight video of him on my channel on uh, on Instagram as well. And at that point, I only had maybe like 400, 500 followers. So I didn't really expect him to see it, but Eddie Jackson sees it in a couple hours. He comments on it. He's like, oh, this is the best video I've ever seen of me. So I was like huh. freaking out inside. And 
it was just a lot of fun talking to him and he's also been kind of in touch with me over the past two years um you know i just wish him congrats on the stuff that he's done and you know wish him good luck for his games and also talking with eddie jackson that's a lot of fun yeah, yeah, you know, a four-year, uh, fifty-eight million dollar extension for him to keep him in Chicago. Uh, definitely a well-deserved one there. What do you got, Parth? Yeah, definitely, definitely a top ten safety too. Oh, yeah, hell yeah, obviously. Um, you've had multiple uh, videos receive over fifty thousand views. Um, which mix of yours has been the most fun to make so far? Most fun to make, I would have to say that Trubisky video I released a couple weeks ago. It was like the yeah, I forgot what I named it, but it was <laughs> it was like freaking. It took me a long time to make. Um, it was probably the best edited video I've ever made. So I would have to say making that video, especially with everybody hating on Trubisky right now, the media all against him, a lot of the fan base against him as well. I uh, just to put something out there for the Trubisky fans that still remain, and you know, kind of trying to hype this guy up when nobody else is. I feel like that was that was a lot of fun to do, and I'm happy it turned out pretty well. Um, tell, me as about, well. tell me about it, bro. I run Trubisky yeah, dude. Nation. <laughs> Trubisky Nation, man. Go follow him as well. Dude, you yeah. deal with a lot of shit, I bet. Oh, it's insane. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even run a Trubisky page that I do. Like, I posted like a yeah. two one post. And, like, yeah. I tell you, I got it straight hated on. It was crazy, but I just Dude, if, it, you, you know? if you defend Trubisky in any exactly. way, like, people are after you. Even if, it, if, if oh, it's yeah. based on stats and all, like, they do not care. I also feel like the fan base is split in general. Like, I'm not essentially yeah. completely against Trubisky. That was a good answer you had earlier about about uh, wanting him in your heart. And I could probably say the same thing if I'm being completely honest. I think that's the best-case scenario that he comes out and balls out. I just don't think it's likely in my head. But oh, even yeah, posting about years, Foles, yeah. there's people rushing to Trubisky's side when you make posts about him, and uh, I've seen that as well. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah sure. Chris. I, I definitely think he can improve. But going into my next question, uh, while your content is mostly Bears mixtape, you've done some other stuff for other teams, including a Kobe White mix back in April of 2019. How excited? April, I mean April of 2020. How excited yeah. are you to have the NBA to have the NBA back in July? And what are your expectations for Kobe? Oh man, I mean Kobe is a baller. Like in the system we have right now on the Bulls, I feel like it's not catered towards rookies to have any sort of success. Um, you saw that even Laurie Markkinen, even though he's not a rookie, he took a step backwards this year. So if we get rid of Jim Boylan, we get an actual decent coach that knows how to coach up these young guys and knows how to develop people. Um, Kobe White can be a star in this league. I mean, I've seen some games where he can just shoot the ball so freaking well. And his passing, I feel like, is underrated as well. His defense obviously has to work on, but that's something that all young players have to work on. So... Yeah, Kobe has a lot of potential. And, you know, um, you also asked about how excited I'm, I am for the NBA. Um, it's not confirmed yet, right? Like, I mean, they're working on to get it in, I think, Orlando. A little Disney World NBA action. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure, awesome. man. Yeah. I would be hella excited. I mean, I love sports in any kind. I've been watching even golf for the past couple of days, um, MMA and all. So I would love to have basketball back. But, I mean, our Bulls are not going to be there, so it's not going to be as exciting obviously but yeah i I'd mentioned it earlier in this ball. yeah we're gonna have to root for the uh the blackhawks the old 24th seed yeah. in, in the nhl oh, tournament yeah. but uh not bad i mean i also never would have expected to see tom brady holding out from 170 yards uh if i'm <laughs> true, being honest true. but um you know one of the big takes this offseason from the media hate towards the bears has been ryan clark who said in the past that Allen oh, robinson God. uh isn't a true yeah. wide receiver one in this league you grimace at everything man <laughs> But uh, Dude, it's because it's so wrong. Like, yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, so I just wanted to ask, what were your thoughts on that take? Uh, and do you think that Allen Robinson is a wide receiver one in this league? It's a bad take. Like the stats don't prove him right. Um, over the past what, like pretty much over his entire career, Trubis or not Trubisky. Um, Allen Robinson has never had really an elite quarterback ever, or even a, an above average quarterback. Maybe for. 2018 that was the only time Trubisky was you know above average but beyond that he's never played in a stable system with a stable quarterback and he's still putting up over a thousand yards like pretty much every year and he just has so much potential you look at him he's one of the best route runners in the entire NFL he has really good hands his catch radius is really good um, he has a body for the NFL and I guarantee like if we get good quarterback play next year Allen Robinson is going to go off. He's going to be a pro bowler. Pro He's going to have over 
Yep. Maybe 1,300 yards. I don't know. Ooh, like, that's a bold take. I mean, Nagy, Nagy does love to spread the ball. Yeah, exactly. But he's, without a doubt, the best receiver on our team right now. And he is a, he is a wide receiver number one for sure. Yeah. I agree with you on that. Yeah. Um. So you you made a mixtape on like the amount of times the Packers got help from the referees. How fun <laughs> was it to make that one? Dude, that one was... I enjoyed that one so much. I, I got a, so much... I, I, I got Clash so much stuff. Yeah, dude, I got so much hate for that video because dude, that was like posted, fifteen minutes <laughs> of Packers. No, I know. It, it took me so long to make that video too because I was going <laughs> back through every single game just trying to see like because I only had so much stuff like that I remembered. Yeah. So I had to ask people for help on my ass on Twitter for help on what are like the worst moments of the referees, you know, helping the Packers this year. <laughs> and honestly, it did not take me that long to make it because you know there were so many moments I could find. Like I could have made that video maybe freaking like 30 minutes long because it's just that they get away with holding so often um a game against the lions we all know what happened but man i, right. I faced so much backlash for that that, I had that cordero pay, play still makes yeah. me mad to this day dude, dude it's such bs man like yeah it's i don't know <laughs> so, so going into my last question uh your journey your youtube has been a long with, with hours of hard work put in how do you stay persistent to keep growing Sorry, could you repeat your question? I think my uh, shout out Skype might kind of shut off. <laughs> so I said your journey on YouTube has been a long one with hours of hard work put in. How do you yeah. stay persistent to keep growing? Um, well, it's all based on passion, really. Like I love doing what I do. I'm not really doing it for the subscribers or for the money because if I was doing it for the money, I'd probably do something else like a long time ago. Um, like work but a job. I just really yeah. What's that? I said like work a job. <laughs> yeah yeah work a job hell yeah that's a lot more stable but i just really love doing this like i love this team so much i love making these videos i love you know making people happy because a lot of people they they've given me their praise they they're all like you know your videos bring a lot of happiness to me so just doing that for other people you know doing something i enjoy even though some nights are pretty tough like i've had a lot of sleepless nights of just trying to you know come up with content trying to come up with you know a a really good highlight video um there's work that goes into it obviously but at the end of the day the reward is really amazing to me yeah so that's why i keep on persisting with it yeah so obviously you know you're set to continue to grow uh and i'm excited to see how you continue to take off but one more question for you and this is probably the most important one other than the Foles and trubisky one earlier mm -hmm. nfc north is looking to be very competitive this year um some could say that the vikings took a little bit of a step back. They had a solid NFL draft, but lost some good players. Obviously, you always got to respect Green Bay. And then Detroit is, uh, yeah, they're Detroit. But uh, <laughs> how do you see the NFC North playing out in 2020 with this expanded playoff field, uh, seven teams now based on the new CBA? And do you believe that the Bears have a shot at the playoffs? Well, number one, I definitely believe the Bears have a shot at the playoffs. If you look at our roster, pretty much we only need an average offense. Maybe not even that. If a we have a below offense. average, yeah. What's that? I said yeah. a subpar offense, even. Yeah, yeah. Not even. It doesn't have to be average. Like our defense, I feel like is going to be so great, so elite with all the talent that we have that we're not going to need need that much help from the offense. So if we can just get a little bit of help, you know, that's going to be enough for a playoff team. But I also feel like the Packers, you know. We cannot count them out. They still have Aaron Rodgers. They they did lose, you know, some people on that roster, and they did not get help at you know receiver. Obviously, that's probably their biggest need, receiver. They did not get really any elite receivers to fill in that hole. But the Packers are still going to be a factor as well. So I I actually have the Packers maybe finishing in first right now. The Bears finishing in second. Uh, Vikings probably third, and Lions fourth because they just there's still the Lions like you said. So. Yeah, that's kind of how I see it playing out. What about you guys? What do you think? I I probably agree with you on a pin. Uh, Green Bay, yeah. you have to respect Green Bay. I I do think the Bears make the playoffs. Uh, that might be a little bit of a bold take, but seven teams. I mean, if mm. there were seven teams last year, they're in. And maybe if they win one more game, they're yeah. they're even a higher seed than seven. So, I think. Uh, yeah, I said it earlier, but I think a subpar offense does it. What do you think, Parth? Yeah, like 2018, the offense was too great. I mean. Us Bears fans like to blow it to a proportion how Trubisky was above average. I'd say he's average, even though, even though I'm a big Trubisky guy. Um, so, yeah, if we could just get some average quarterback play, you know, spread the ball, I think the Bears can easily win 11 games, 12 games. 
same here. Like when when the defense put us in a position to score, you know, this season we didn't do that. Expect like I look at the Chargers game, like we were in the red zone and we we got a field goal of that when we were at the like the six yard line. So if we can go back to twenty eighteen where even though we had a lot of turnovers and the defense put us in a great position for offense and we scored, I mean we should definitely make the playoffs this year. Especially with seven teams being being able to make it, still six. So, you know, I feel like the Bears should definitely make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, Rashab. That was awesome. Yeah, no problem, man. Thanks for having me on. We should do one on my channel, too, sometime. Let's definitely do it, dude. So if you want yeah, to find yeah. more uh, from Rashab, you can head over to his Instagram, The Windy City Pros. You can also find him on Twitter, at The Windy City P. Link to his this link to his YouTube channel will be in the description. Uh, this definitely isn't the last of uh, us doing stuff with him. If you want more content from us, you can go over to our website, Bearddon.com, for columns, articles, and blogs. We're trying to get stuff up on there every day now. Uh, you can also find the links to our social media fan pages down in the description. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you guys today. Parshaw, Jalen McClinton, any last words, boys? Um, let's all link up at a game or training camp, hopefully, if that starts up. I feel like that'd be a lot of fun. Just like sure, the Bears yeah. fan page community and all those guys <laughs> would be a great time. I'm down. Hopefully, hopefully I'm home during the season. Uh, right now I'm in Arizona, so uh, hopefully I am. I w- that would definitely be a fun, you know, fun time for all of us. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, let's just hope that fans are in the stadium to some capacity at this point. I think that's our best hope. Yeah. And honestly, at the end of the day, if there aren't fans, uh, it's better than nothing because football is better than no football when it boils down to it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in once again. Grind to 2K is on. It's been a pleasure to be your host. Once again, my name is Chris Malpe. Bears fans, do us a favor. Stay safe. Uh, continue to flatten the curve. Illinois is looking to get a little better here down the road. And as always, bear down. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.